from the mountains to the prairies to the ocean white with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america my home sweet home ladies and gentlemen welcome to my job shop my name is Keith and I'm in here repairing America one project at a time. Although today I'm going to be doing some assembly work. All right. Uh, some of you have inquired about this frame sitting in the background of the last video and a couple other things. And by the way, uh, this is summertime. So I got the door open and I have uh, a, a blowing fan and a, a, and a suction pan running at the same time. Kind of keeps it nice and cool in here and I'm comfortable. Uh, so anyway, just yesterday I finished putting the finished paint job on the framework and the other components that we're going to be adding to this as well. I'm going to start assembling this. We are waiting on UPS to bring in a few um, uh, last minute things that I wanted to make sure that I had uh, uh, some fasteners and some other things. So I went ahead and made the order in and uh, so we'll, we'll have that coming in. Uh, just a few other components that we needed to do the uh, the rest of the plumbing and clamping and all of that kind of stuff. But we are ready to start assembling and we have plenty to do while we're waiting for UPS to come in here anyway. And we'll have this wrapped up by tomorrow afternoon so my customer can pick it up. He's been waiting for it. The one thing that The one thing that really held off the project, and, and a lot of us run into this uh, in manufacturing and repairing and things like that, is our supplies and our tools. Now, I wasn't waiting on China, all right? I was actually getting quality bearings made in Japan. And we knew right off the bat from the get-go, even when I quoted this project to my customer, that this was going to be six to eight weeks out. And... The first pair of drill presses I did, I think in 2021 there, um, for Cape Cod Fence, I think it took about three weeks or four weeks to get these bearings. And that was just before um, Biden economics actually kicked in pretty good. Uh, but now um, they still held up to their word and they still got it to me when they said they were gonna get it to me. And in turn, I told my customer that after receiving these, I would be turning this thing around and be ready within a week. And we're on that schedule right now. So um, anyway, those radial bearings are or were the hold up and now everything is uh, obtainable. All right. So anyway, we're going to get on the assembly of our drill press. Okay, we got two sets of pneumatic cylinders for this and we have two large ones here that control the motor up and down and then we have two smaller ones that control the clamping of the material we're just going to throw these on here to get them up off the bench get them in place here they're not in the way of any other assembling and we'll adjust their ports this these pretty much just go facing backwards just like that it's pretty straightforward but these ports here we have a, a a keeper rod that comes up in here so i like the hoses coming back in this direction here but we gotta we have to uh, get by this rod that gets that goes up and down in here so that is a little bit of a quirk that we gotta deal with And we'll just put the port somewhat in the back for right now. 
And with paint, these are a little bit tighter because we bored that hole pretty close. The cylinders have an end mount on them and they're registered. Well, that was sweet. I just helped the uh, UPS man uh, unload our boxes here, and it's uh, 10 after 10, so that was pretty good uh, timing. All right, we have the main carrier for the motor, and all I'm doing before we get this up in place there, I want to run my tap um, through all the threaded holes in this because of paint and also the welding was all done after we did the machine work so if there's any splatter inside the threaded area we want to make sure that it's gone or removed before I try to put a bolt in it. And if I hang this off the table a little bit right here I should be able to put a handle on there. All right, that was it. This one here, I got a weld on both sides, so a lot of times when you weld on something that close to a hole, you're gonna have an issue with it. But that one went through fairly easy. Okay, and just our 3 8 holes here that are left in bolt the motor down to. The rest of them are through holes. Now that we got the UPS uh, in here, we'll have all the fasteners to bolt everything together um, without having to really scrounge my nut and bolt bin out there in the container, which I know is getting down there. So I ordered some for inventory, but I ordered some for the job as well. It was just time, time to have the standard items plentiful again. All right, let's bolt some bearings on. We're gonna bolt on our bearings here. Now, this is the cable carrier for the electrical coming in and it mounts on the top over here. So I have modified two bolts to use in here to give the same length or similar length than the other bolts coming in here, all right? And um, we're gonna be using flat washers on all of them except for this one right here, <clears throat> all right? Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just a little tiny dab of never sees on, on all of the bolts that we put together in here these bearings I'm gonna take this locking screw and put it out towards the outside once everything is tracking nice and true you can t tension that to your liking and lock washer and a nut Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and put one of the bottom ones in here. Now we can go ahead and we can tighten these up. Okay, now we're ready to slip in the guides, or the rods. And 
I'm just going to turn that over so I'm not tempted to set any paint on it and we're going to let that overhang there. Plastic, we don't want to bump it. Okay, now we should be able to tension these. I'll go get a 10 millimeter. All right, now we're ready to put on our flange bearings. Believe it or not, we, we use these for end supports for each end of the rod. These flange bearings are cheaper than a flange socket to support a rod. They also self-align to any surface that you're clamping down to and on the angles that are welded on there they are flat and 90 but they could be somewhat slight bit of idiosyncrasies at any one spot and these would compensate for it because they do self-align just like these align in their axis all right so we put one each end here because these fit between two fixed points so we actually stick this in between and then we put the bolts into them and we remember to put the zerk fittings facing out which is the other the other way all right this is the bottom and this is the top because this is the locator or the adjusting screw for your stop on your down travel if you want to set it or raise it up for doing routing and other accessory cuts that this drill press can do okay i put a couple pieces of paper there because i'm just resting those right there and then i'll slowly pivot this up in place there we go. Now I'm just going to slide bearing up here and put one of these bolts in. I've already got never sees on that one. Okay, now that holds it up in place. Now I can peel my, my tape off of here and paper. Okay, zerk, 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 zerk. Okay, all the zerks are facing out where you can get them. <laughs> Nothing worse than assembling something and then having to take it back apart uh, because of that. All right. Now we have one of the things I was ordering was large hex head bolts because I cut this to length one of these gets welded on here and I'm gonna go ahead and make that up now because I want to be able to screw that down in there and hold this up off of the bearings um, and have that in position 
All right, uh, we're going to be testing out the uh, welding filter now as far as uh, I'm going to do a little TIG weld just around the top of this right here. So I figured I'd bring you in and at least it lets me have a test of my filter system for my uh, camcorder here. All right, I'm going to zoom you in. All right, I got my helmet on and now we're set and ready to go. This filler rod I have is just 309L16. It blends good with steel, stainless, and everything in between. Hopefully I can just run a bead around here and take this steel shaft to this grade 8 nut. Now this also has a little cadmium plated. I'm wide open space here, so I'm not going to be breathing this in, but I want you to I want you to see what happens. I don't know if it's going to flare up or not and uh, and the uh, results of it. And if there's an issue with it, then we'll clean it up and we'll we'll take care of it. But sometimes I have no issues, especially when I add the 308, a drop of rod here or there. Here we go. looks good I don't have any pinholes or pots or anything else it does have a nice finish on there I come around this way here and then I like to come back and start again because I want my rod in front of the puddle so without a well position where it's continually going around I just stop and I change directions all right this cool down and we'll put this on the uh, drill press <clears throat> next we'll tighten up our cylinders here Get him, Tiger. <laughs> All right, now we can we can put our rod ends on. Put a little never sees on that. All right, and these just, they don't have no lock nut or no, anything else. I'm, I lock them right on tight to the ram. Leave the zerks pointing out this way. Okay, we haven't tightened any of these yet because we kind of let this all be stress-free mounting. All right, I'll get the bar and the two bolts for that. Okay, and this link that is just a joining piece between that cylinder and this cylinder. And they work together pushing and pulling. All right, if it serves me right, we adjusted our adjustment down and we use this block here. This is a sample of the post that they drill. And to the beginning of the bottom hole there was like seven inches or so. And if we take 
this hole here and the face of this chuck and we come down it's like seven inches so this should be pretty darn close and then we can start it with that bolt we've already got never sees on so I think I just rock this up on here Something like that. Okay, let's see if we can get one started on the other side. <laughs> hey, you're allowed to be lucky once in a while. I felt I was with uh, Lisa there, but you don't have to tell her that. Awesome, a couple new shafts coming our, or actually a, <laughs> a couple racked up shafts. Uh, whether I replace them or I repair them, uh, they'll have two brand new shafts going back. But uh, they gave me the heads up, so we're ready. <laughs> I have to wipe the dust off, it's been sitting around for <laughs> eight weeks. You know, that's about how long ago you saw me Mount up the chuck on there. Okay, I think we're ready for a test cycle here. And we don't have any uh, adjustment in it right now, so it's my air nozzle in here. I was just barely pumping it. Okay, uh, we should be able to take that block out now. There we go. Uh, last night I, or yesterday afternoon, late, I fabricated our stops. We got our material in yesterday which was just flat bar and some two by three inch block. And I whittle these out really quick. The latest changeover on the backstop, that's what this is. And, and I've got the angle that goes across here over there. And once we mount these, we'll know center to center. Then we can go ahead and drill the holes that mount it to the end of our rod. And this is basically an in, in and out adjustment. The change out from my original uh, design was because when I first built them uh, for Cape Cod fence over there they didn't tell me they wanted a backstop so I made a clamp on unit and it clamped on just about in this area right here um, so I make a, a wall to plate and drill and tap it so now we don't have anything that's just clamping and not in you know it's not it's a whole bunch of hardware we don't need to have all right so basically this mounts onto the back of that plate and then that plate assembly mounts right to the frame itself. Okay, I'm going to take this in and uh, put it in a vise so I can really crank down on these because I don't want I don't want these to come loose because they are what. lock these two pieces together. This should be like one piece, but 
that's a lot of milling if you want to take all of that out. Okay, I, just, I purchased these adjustable handles from McMaster Car, and Okay, now we bolt this right to the frame. All right, and the rods, they just go in here. They just work forward and back and simple. We have both of our adjustable rods mounted up here now and everything slides in and out. Now we just need to know center to center. If we take, this is our backstop here, and this will be in three different positions. We're gonna have three holes on each end, countersunk for the flathead in there so it stays flat. This can mount this way, and this can also mount this way here. We keep it as simplistic as possible, all right? Now we just need to know center to center so we can lay out and then go drill our, our back plate and we'll be set to go. All right, are we gonna go like this? No. We're gonna go like this. We're resting it against our back rods there. And then we can get in here and lock our stop. Just tension our gib a little bit there. Okay. Okay, that's got a pretty good feel to it. Let's see, I got uh, 37, 3, 40, 42, something like that. All right, so we're just under 37, 350. Now I'm going to go get my scribe and lay it out. All right, I think this, I think I cut this 40, 42, so 21 is about the center. So we take our sharpen and we kind of lay out so we have a center line in here. Um, now, this rod is one inch, so we're just going to subtract one inch equally uh, because we're going to be center to center. And we we're measuring outside to outside, so we're just going to take and subtract one of those. So we're really looking at uh, 36, 342. All right, so we're gonna catch, um, we're gonna move this out of our way here.
center line. All right, um, 36 would be 18. We'll get our sharp, sharp them uh, laid out here. Let's see, that'd be 18 and 300, about 316. So somewhere right around in there. And the same off of this end here. Let's see here. We got our uh, scale in here. I'm going to come off this side here. So half of what we want is 18,171. Uh, so there's 18,150, 170, 170 plus or minus 5,000s right there. All right, and we'll do the same thing over here. 18, 170, plus or minus five right there. All right, and if we take and we hold this on our one, just to give it a, a good eyeball there, and we go here and we're 37, just shy of Creates, so it looks like we're right on the money. All right, now I want uh, one inch increments there, so we really, but I want it. I want to make sure that I stay flat in here. All right, it works out perfect if we go three, two, one. All right, let's go drill those holes. We stopped to wipe off our, our bluing. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, that's a good sign. Okay, I don't know if these are equal, so we'll just kind of relax them. Let this thing find its flatness. Lightly snugged out one. Get this one up here. Well, they found their own there. Let's see if this thing actually... I polished a little bit off of that rod to fit in the bore here, and I think I'm going to do the same thing with this. All right, I'm happy with our liking. Of course, that side is locked in. We're all the way down in here, um, but I'm able to go ahead and adjust it in and out where I want and have it firm enough. You know, when you lock this down, they're slamming uh, fence posts in here and uh, this has got to be rigid as heck here also we got our motor lowered all the way down here and it clears our frame and if they needed to go down farther they can invert this and this lip goes underneath this other angle over here all right let's move on to our locking down uh, feet here 
a uh, UPS just came in and I and I just got a package here I'm not promoting um, this product other than I personally enjoy it the first time I received one of these was at the first bar Z summer bash that I went to and these are Dixon long reach uh, markers and day before yesterday I come out to the bench here and somebody smashed the whole end right off of my Dixon reach and so anyway I got online and of course Amazon has everything but I despise Amazon and uh, I was able to pick up I picked up let's see what I did I got six of these for 36 bucks so that was six plus Menards and I'm just sharing it because I got a good deal at Menards and also too I ordered these two days ago and boom oh it did say second day air so second day air in their shipping total bill was 36 bucks and some change uh, so there's six something plus the 11 percent um, rebate mail-in and I and they email you the form and all you do is copy it cut it off and put a, a stamp on it and put it in the mail and who knows when that will come in but it does it does but these are the greatest tools and after using one and I mean they lasted a long time um, I, I probably had it for five six years and uh, Anyway, if that person wouldn't have smashed that friggin' thing, I would still have it. But anyway, I know where to get these, and um, like any obsessive compulsive behavior, I got six of them now to put in stock. <laughs> Dixon Long Reach, great tool. nice end on there you can really get in there and I actually I was um, I was laying out some holes on this thing here because uh, I, I needed to be able to really get in there and mark them up all right well, let's go put these somewhere where they'll be safe even for me <laughs> that's how it is it's like a, I'll spend I'll spend too much time looking for them again all right but we got one out here I hope that idiot doesn't smash that one all right, I just took two cuts down the side and milled a, a three-quarter um, width and, and depth uh, off of there to clear this rod on the bottom of these. The original design, these two sides here leave a little indent into the wood. So we put rubber strips over it. That took care of the original ones here. But I'm making a Delrin pad now and this will just bolt right onto the piece right here. And that will hold them in place. And then it's got a nice wide, broad dull run surface to hold the uh, timbers down. Just the same as our air cylinders for the head. When you put on the ball joints here. Okay, we want the Zerk fitting forward. Not that that's going to be a high lube situation, but it has it. All right, and we coat up these, and the rod goes up through the back. Okay, and that's made to float because the, the timbers aren't always 100%, and that gives the head flexibility, but it always keeps them in line. These things only operate up, down. All right, let's get this other one on. 
Well, we finally finished the project that's been eaten up uh, this last week of getting this together for our customer. Uh, we had a long duration of waiting for those bearings from Japan. And they are good quality bearings and they were well worth the wait. And we knew that right off the bat from when I bid this project and taking on the uh, deposit and starting this project, we knew it was gonna be a time period. So when they came in, I said, hey, in a week, I'll get it to you. Um, the morning after exactly a week, I had this completely done because uh, that the night before, um, I needed a couple 3 8 bushings and, and uh, anyhow, uh, I wasn't able to finish up the pneumatic on the cylinders until uh, yesterday morning. So anyway, we've been cleaning up <laughs> this area of the shop because it, I call it a weekend warrior and that's kind of where you just keep on going on a project and the tools that you use just pile up around the project all and not in your way but out of you know like a giant circle okay <laughs> and uh, so anyway I've been cleaning that up uh, I have been following along with some tidbits here with uh, the one video where we did the spindle, YouTube and Rumble, uh, through Instagram and my MeWe uh, account, I also share some of this project along at the way. And we have a lot of different questions come out, and one of the main things was, as soon as you say this is a drill press, they see how this is rigged up, and they're going, what about the bearings in the motor? All right, I, I replicated my press from earlier designs and here's a couple shots of those earlier designs and these machines have been working for decades and it's not a bearing issue the reason why it's not a bearing issue is they're driving a wood auger through um, fence posting that's what it is this machine is made for a fence company to bore those big holes on the main post for the fences so this basically follows that wood bit and it's pneumatically controlled and we can control the travel speed of this to stay along with that bit. Now there is some other functions because I've included stops for the thing to come down and they can run some router bits and set up a guide and they can do some routing and shaping and that's only a, a side thrust as well. So hence I'm glad there are a lot of engineers out there, and rightfully so, concerned about the bearings and the downward pressure. There's no doubt. And you could take those bearings out of the inbell, and you could give uh, a radial thrust uh, style ball bearing, and you could put them in there, and you can actually uh, hinder that problem as well. But with the decades of use prior to my designs, and this is the third, this is the third unit I've made, and there's some other. Um, advancements that I've done in the design of this. So uh, this is the latest model and it's ready for the customer right now. Um, one of the other questions I think it was uh, on my video rumble and the question was asked uh, in concern how or how true the spindle is running uh, with the way I mounted this chuck on here. And that's a fair good question. Let's check it out. I don't think my mag base will mount from here, but I think if I set it back here, I think I can still get this around to where you can see it and see. And of course I'll zoom in soon as we learn how to run our mag base here okay this is just a, uh, a piece of stainless steel rod whoop, that I put in here okay all right there's motion because of this thing on guide rails and everything else. Let me zoom you in. I'm coming over the camera because it's much faster to zoom you in here. All right, bring it into focus. All right. 
Now I'm just gonna rock this like that so you can see how it moves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin it fast and then we'll see what we got. Okay, it looks like about two at the max. All right, we'll bring it back out to full screen. All right, like I said before, this is chucking on a uh, giant wood auger. Now we zip tied their key up here and Cape Cod Fence was the last company I built two for. So there's one here on the Cape and there's one over in Connecticut. And this one here will be over in Falmouth. Um, right up here, a magnetic uh, holder for the chuck key so it's out of the way and you don't lose it. I, I forget if it was up here or right on here. They made a mount where that key was in there and I think it had a little bungee on it so it kind of, you know, pops out of there. All right. I got the, the errors on for the motor. The foot pedal on the ground is, is gives you up and down and the exhaust port has got a, an adjustable vent and it lets, it lets the air flow out and you can control the exit of travel of the air from the other so or the relieving cylinder or the back side of the cylinder so you got a working pressure and then you got a relieving side and then we can adjust that for that speed coming down and of course going up they'll know how slow to set that to operate with their their boring bit or whatever they've got going in here all right so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna lower this down. I mean, it's even it's even got its own safety. So even if it's up and I take the air off, it's not gonna just fall. All right. Now we're gonna energize the hold downs. And the hold down I have them on two separate inlets so that there's. A, if one side fails, the other side would fail too if you had them hooked together. So just lessening that, that part of the problem. The same thing on this valve, I have an exit. Actually, it has two exit ports, so it breathes a little bit more freely. And these cylinders are way, way smaller. So the speed is still kind of fast, but it is controlled in a sense. And also, too, when you're ready to hold it and you're ready to lock the thing down, you want to lock it on down. The change out I did in the design of this was adding in the Delrin block right here so you got a wider footprint so you don't put Mars into the log itself. All right, and this is a three phase and it does have a rotary switch down here and I this new switch here has got a lockout. So if you want to lock it out, you can lock it out. And then you have your plug and on the wall this is a 30 amper. I have three phase in here, but I only have 20 amps, so I, I can't just twist it in and, and uh, operate the, the motor at this time. Emergency stop. Anything happens. All right. So let's go ahead and, you know, we see the foot pedal I got down here and you can position that wherever you want to position it down here so that you're comfortable as an operator where you want to have that. And this right here, just so you don't accidentally lift it or put it down when you don't want to. So you got that. This has a built-in shroud here as well. All right, I brought you around to the backside so that uh, I could show off my uh, tie wrap job. <laughs> no, I actually, I, I have key places that I can mount um, clamps and clamp up uh, the runs and then zip tie the runs together so that the airlines aren't just hanging all over the place like you saw on the, uh, the, the old school method there from uh, the pictures from decades ago. Um, 
but I thought uh, I'd go ahead and kick you on the backside here and I've got the the, uh, the travel set up with the air so I'll give you a view of what we have here and we have um, a 12 inch travel there and my adjustment stop here so we can set that for adjustments if they wanted some sta stationary locations set either depth or um, to come down and do some routing with their table they manufactured their own tabletop that's why the frame is bare in the front and everything's accessible back here clean you can change out uh, the ball joints if you needed to and it's all nuts and bolts together and almost every accessory in here is um, uh, obtainable uh, you know on the shelf right now Once I pull these cords off of here, I'll hang them on the front here, you can see the back, the back gauge or the stop is adjustable by just loosening the little clamp and then you can, you can tap them in and out. You got to work a little bit each time because it, this is straight and rigid. So, um, and I've got them, this is stainless steel, this is aluminum and it's a ream bore and everything's nice and tight but you want you're slamming logs in against here basically fence posts are you know small logs here's a close-up of it and these are adjustable you can uh, adjust the positioning of these whatever suits you so that when you're up here in the front and operating you you can you can adjust where that comfortable feel is for you all four legs i put them hole down here that you can shim and anchor this down level it out is some of the fence companies have been building tables on either side so that they can load uh, their their machine with their material and set stops and uh, and hold hold things in a you know off the table you know type of situation so if you're in a fence building company <laughs> and you're in need of one of my new design presses. Hey, give me a call. I'll be glad to give you a quote. Um, basically, I'm just kind of sharing another one of my builds. Uh, I didn't carry on too much of the fabrication of frame and everything else. because You've seen my handiwork in frame building on the um, uh, big screen elevator series that I've done quite a long time ago. And uh, so, you know, I can, I can do the fit up and all of that and the other day we got in a push and i just didn't show you zip tying wires together or putting the boxes and stuff like that together other than that um this is what it's all about and until next time get her done